Hey y'all, Layla here with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's Tumblr tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this candy cane tumbler. Like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. And don't forget to follow me on all of my socials, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I'm starting with a 30 ounce skinny from Makerflow Crafts. I'm taking a 180 grit sanding block and I'm sanding the tumbler all around. Once I finish sanding the tumbler, I take 91% alcohol and I wipe the entire tumbler down, removing any excess sanding dust or oils that may have been placed on the tumbler. If you are doing a candy cane tumbler, for me personally, it's always easier to use these skinny or straight tumblers and not tapered because you're going to have diagonal lines and it's just easier to place the tape and the vinyl down on a straight tumbler. And for the snowflakes, I am using printed pattern vinyl from the Vinyl Cottage. I am using Snowflake 3C. I will have that listed in my description with a direct link and coupon code for the Vinyl Cottage. I am going to measure my tumbler from top to bottom. These printed vinyl pieces come 12 by 12. So I'm just going to use my cutting board or table that I purchased from Joanne Fabric and just cut down my vinyl just so I don't have to waste any. Uh, and I just have a little excess left over. I'm first going to measure that, make sure it fits. And then now I'm peeling up some of that vinyl and then I'm cutting an inch of that backing from the vinyl to have like a lip. I decided to show y'all a method that I've, that I've seen if it does make it easier for y'all. I put a piece of blue tape down and I add a little bit of lines with a Sharpie. So it's a, a straight line and then I add that vinyl to the tumbler. This is for anybody who might overthink this process, might lay it down crooked, not straight. I really don't think about it too much because if it's a little crooked, it's just a random design of snowflakes. So you really won't be able to tell if it's not placed straight. But if you wanna do it that way, go ahead and do it that way and add your line like I showed y'all. So basically what I do is I just place the sticky side on the tumbler and I just slowly place that sticky side around the tumbler and I slowly remove that backing from the tumbler. This vinyl is thin. It's not like um, 631 or 651 vinyl. So it's very easy to manipulate and to really just place around the tumbler. Uh, if you have not done this before, I always try to recommend for beginners to place the vinyl like halfway on the tumbler do like maybe like a split tumbler with vinyl and then work your way up to a fully covered vinyl tumbler like this one. I'm now going to go in with a piece of blue painter's tape and then just remove the top layer of that vinyl that overlaps the bottom just to have a nice straight line on my tumbler. And once you have your vinyl placed around the tumbler, press down on the top and the bottom. I'm going in with my cup edging tool from the Wicked Shimmer, and I'm going to place that on the bottom and the top of my tumbler just to remove that vinyl on the top and the bottom. I like how this looks. I'm going to add glitter to those areas. So I always do this when I do a fully covered vinyl wrap tumbler. I think it just looks clean and crisp, and it's really super easy. Now to move on to adding those candy can stripes on the tumbler, I'm going to add three pieces of tape for this part. The first piece of tape is going to stay. My second piece of tape or middle piece of tape is going to act as a spacer. And then the third piece of tape is also going to be placed and stay on the tumbler. So basically I'm adding my spacer in the middle just to have a nice even space between my two pieces of tape that's staying on the tumbler. All I do is repeat this process for my second candy cane stripe. Instead of using one piece of tape for the spacer, I'm using two. For this specific tumbler, I didn't want my lines to be the same width. I wanted them to be all different because I think when it's all different, it looks kind of cool and you can't really see the mistakes as well. So I thought, why not try it? Let's just try to make some of the snowflake stripes bigger than others. So that's what I did. If you wanna keep them all similar, just keep adding one piece of tape between each line as the spacer. And remember, you can always reuse this tape. So that spacer, keep that piece of tape and keep adding that to the tumbler so you don't waste your materials and just keep reusing that tape until you have all of your lines placed and then press them firmly around the tumbler. 
I'm now going in with my X-Acto knife. Make sure you are using a new blade or a very sharp blade for this because it's very difficult to cut through this vinyl, especially if you're cutting through the overlap piece. So all I'm doing is I'm cutting around the blue tape. And so everywhere where that blue tape is placed, that's where it's going to be cut. So as you see, I just cut around the blue tape and then I'm peeling up what was underneath that blue tape. This is trust the process moment. Trust me, this is going to look a mess. This blue tape is just acting as a guide, but this vinyl is so thin that you'll see that my lines are very just all over the place. They're not straight, but again, trust the process. It's, it's going to look great. Just keep trucking along and you'll see at the end, you'll have a beautiful tumbler. The most important part with this is really just take your time because that blade will really like just start swirling and squiggling around the tumbler and you don't want that. You want to keep that line as straight as possible and you want your X-Acto knife to be sharp. I then took 100% acetone and I removed that black permanent marker from where I placed that guideline in the beginning. Be careful with this because that will like take away some of that printed vinyl area. So just keep that in mind. Now I am using my white pop of color and I'm going to paint the tumbler and then I'm going to add some diamonds 3.0 on that paint. So I'm using the paint as an adhesive for that glitter. You could paint your tumbler white and then place the vinyl on top of the white and then cut and then place your glitter. But this is the process that I found to be the easiest. So what I did was I painted the entire tumbler white. By time I was finished painting the entire tumbler, the first part that I painted was dry. So I just did a very thin base coat because the glitter that I'm placing on this tumbler is kind of transparent. So I didn't want all of that white or stainless steel peeking through that transparent glitter. So that's why I decided to do one thin coat of white to have a nice base coat. And then I went back in and then I put the second coat while that second coat was still wet. I placed that glitter on that paint. That paint is acting as that adhesive for that glitter to stick on the tumbler. And like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to add the glitter to the top and the bottom of the tumbler. So I took my time and I did just that. So I painted that to have my base coat and then I went back and I added the glitter. I did not use an angled brush for this, but if I did have an angle brush, um, I probably would have chose to use that. But I just have a straight brush and I think it's like a half an inch and it worked perfectly fine. So you'll see I added that first coat of paint and then I added the glitter right over the paint and that glitter acts as, as an adhesive very well and it sticks right to that paint. If you don't have pop of color paint on hand, you can always use acrylic paint or you can always use Mod Podge. Just know that Mod Podge does dry clear. Well, the Mod Podge that I use. So if you want to, you can actually mix that Mod Podge with acrylic paint and use that as that adhesive. And again, trust this process. This tumbler is looking like a hot mess. Don't worry, it's going to look beautiful at the end. The one thing that I would like to stress is if you get a little paint on the edges of that vinyl, don't worry about it. We're going to add little stripes over that. So that's why this is a trust the process moment and it's going to turn out great. So you don't have to be perfect with cutting your lines. You don't have to be perfect with painting or adding your uh, glitter everywhere. Just throw that that stuff on and trust me it'll look beautiful so now I'm taking a dry makeup brush and I'm just wiping away any of that excess glitter that may have been placed on the vinyl because we're going to go back and seal this with a sealer and wherever that glitter is placed it's going to be stuck there so I just want that glitter on those glitter stripes and then I take my tumbler outside and I spray my tumbler with two generous coats of my Krylon Crystal Clear Acrylic Coating. I spray it with the first coat, let it dry, spray it with the second coat. I wait 20 to 25 minutes and then I move on to my first coat of epoxy. I'm using about 15 to 20 milliliters of epoxy total for my first coat. I want a thick enough coat where it's not too bumpy, but I don't want it to be too thick because we're going to add a little bit more epoxy to this once we add those stripes to the tumbler. So make sure you add your epoxy all around your tumbler, a nice coat, just enough to cover that glitter in You don't want a really, really bumpy, like your glitter sticking up, but you want enough 
to have a nice even coat, to have a nice smooth tumbler. So when we apply those decals, it's not bumping. You don't have the glitter peeking through those decals. And then once my epoxy was cured, I'm going with a 220 grit sanding block and I'm going to sand away the entire tumbler just to give myself a little bit more even tumbler. And then after I sand my tumbler, I'm going to go in with my X-Acto knife and remove any of that excess epoxy or paint that may have been placed on the rim of the tumbler. I do this after every step of my epoxy process to make the cleanup process easier. And then I'm going in with my 180 grit sanding block and I'm sanding away that rim as well before moving on to applying those decals to the tumbler. And I also wipe it down with 91% alcohol. And now to apply my decals to the tumbler, all I did was go to Cricut Design Space, I added a rectangle, and then I created my rectangle size to a 0 0.10 width. So all these are, are just rectangles. They are 0 0.10 by 12 inches. I did them as long as I can. I'd rather have them longer than shorter so I can cut them off. I first used my maroon color and I placed that on the outside of each snowflake candy cane stripe and I made sure to cut that right at the bottom. I didn't want that overlapping the glitter, so I wanted that just on the top of the vinyl and the bottom of the vinyl, and I still wanted a nice clean top and bottom of my tumbler. And again, I did that on the outside of each vinyl piece before moving on to adding that gold stripe. And the vinyl that I'm using is from The Vinyl Cottage as well. Again, their website will be linked in my description. And I am using permanent vinyl, but you can always use temporary vinyl. I then went in with my gold metallic vinyl and I added those pinstripes like closer to the maroons. I didn't want them in the middle, but I just wanted them just on the outside because I wanted that white to still really pop and really show through and really like look like a candy cane. Once that was all placed on my tumbler, I took my CC DIY Quick Coat and I applied that to my vinyl pieces. This is a urethane sealer and it allows that vinyl to really adhere to that tumbler. So that way when you go to epoxy, you don't have to worry about your vinyl lifting. This stuff is a lifesaver and I always recommend it to everybody who places vinyl on a tumbler. That does take about 20 to 25 minutes to dry. Once that's dried, we're gonna go in right to epoxying our tumbler with the first coat of epoxy. And I definitely mean the second coat of epoxy. So I'm going to go in with a total of 10 to 15 milliliters of epoxy for my first coat. I'm going to apply that around the entire tumbler. I'm going to let that coat of epoxy cure. And then I'm going to go in with my last coat of epoxy. And that's about 10 to 15 milliliters of epoxy again. So I want to make sure that I'm doing two coats of epoxy because I want to make sure those decals are completely locked in that tumbler. And I don't want a bumpy tumbler. You can sand between coats if you need to, if your tumbler is bumpy or anything like that. After this coat, sand and then put another coat and then you will be finished with this tumbler. And my cleanup process is always taking my X-Acto knife for the final time and cleaning that rim of the tumbler and then washing my tumbler out with Dawn dish soap just to clean out the inside before this tumbler is ready for its new home. And here is the final tumbler. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I talked really fast and really quickly, but I wanted this video to be short and sweet and still have a lot of information for my beginner viewers. So if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and please, if you are a regular watcher or if you just found my channel and you love my content, please go ahead and click that subscribe button because I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by January of 2023. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.